Hi, Year 10. Hope you're safe. Hope you're well. Uh, Miss Lloyd here. Welcome back to part two of our India lessons. Uh, what I'm going to do this week is make sure I keep it a little bit shorter than last week. Last week was 15 minutes. I got a little bit carried away uh, because I haven't taught in a while. Um, so I'm going to try and keep these content down um, so they're not too overwhelming for you. So in terms of part two, we're going to look at India's context in today's lesson. We're going to look at its background and how it is in the situation that it is. So this is India lesson part two. If you haven't watched the part one, please go back and do that and make notes on that. Um, and thank you so much for everyone who's uploaded their notes, uploaded their India booklet, uploaded their quizzes. Uh, thank you very much for participating in that. So as always, a just a quick reminder, um, instructions, continue to complete your India booklet so you can either save and type those notes you can print the India booklet and write in that, or you can just make notes on paper and I've seen some amazing versions and spider diagrams of that, so thank you. Remember there is a quiz at the end of this, so please go on to show my homework um, and complete the 20, I think it's 20 questions this week, uh, multiple choice, quick and easy. Um, and then the challenge, there will be an exam question on the last chart at slide. If you want to give that a go and submit that, I'm more than happy to have a look at those as well. So on with today's lesson. In lesson one, we looked at, as a reminder, India's location. We said it's in Asia, Southern Asia, Indian Ocean. We said it's in a good location to trade. We said, uh, what makes India an NEE? We said an NEE is a newly emerging economy. Um, and we said that India is in the middle. Its literacy is getting better. Its life expectancy is getting better. The wealth of people is getting better, but it's not there yet. Um, we looked at it, why India is important. We talked about its military. We talked about its location. We talked about it getting better. We talked about trade, its population, all of those things that make it important. So today's lesson, India's context. So we're going to look at it from four points of view that you can see on the screen here. We're going to look at it from a cultural context. So we're going to look at the people of India and the background of uh, India's culture. We're going to look at a political context, so the government of India. We're going to look into more detail on the people of India and then we're going to look at the environment of India and then we are done in today's lesson. So starting with the cultural context, India's got a very distinctive culture. If I would have had asked you to imagine or think of the music of India or the people of India, the dress and clothing of people in India, the food that they eat in India, you could have come up with some of the ideas that I'm about to talk about. They've got a very distinctive culture that has passed on as a tradition. Bollywood, you may be well be thinking that that is some sort of rip-off or a copy version of Hollywood. It isn't. Bollywood is the biggest film industry in the world. They actually make five times the amount of films that they do in Hollywood each year and makes a lot more money each year. Food-wise, as we know, it's very spice-based, um, is the food in India. That's because they grow a lot of spices in India, so naturally their food becomes spicy, e.g. curry. So different region in, in India, different regions, produce different spices. If they produce a spice that is mild, they get a mild curry. So an area that is like, for example, Korma, would produce a mild spice curry. Whereas Madras, which is an area of India, um, produces hotter curries because they produce hotter spices. So each region from the spices that they produce has a different flavor and a different spice level to the curries and food that they produce. Lastly, sport. Um, although cricket was invented by the British, which we are rubbish at, um, it is the national sport of India um, that they play the majority of. Moving on, political context. So India was a British colony until 1947. In 1947, it gained independence. And as you can see over here, in 1947, they gained independence. In 2007, they celebrated their 70th year of Independence Day. So now, today, in 2020, they are 73 years since they became independent from Britain. When they became independent from Britain, though, they took on board a lot of the British systems as their own. So they have a democratically elected government where they elect it from the people like we do. They have a British government, very similar like we do, with a prime minister like we do, hopefully better than ours, um, and a cabinet that is underneath that prime minister. So the government follows the British structure because it was a British colony and they took that on board. Moving on to social. 
social context, the people of India are very spiritual. Um, 80% of them are um, Hindus, uh, but there are other religions in India as well. And I like this little picture up here, it shows you some of the, um, some of the religions through India. Um, as we mentioned last lesson, India is a country of inequality. It says on here, 1% of people on 50% of the money. And you can see that if I just move out the way and click on my PowerPoint and zoom into this, you can see that if India's land was divided up as wealth, 1% of people here, would, you can see, would own half of India, right? 1% of people would own just underneath half of India. But as you can see down here, 50% of people would own that small proportion. So the wealth is very unequally distributed. And the fact we used last lesson on that was 20% of people still live in extreme poverty with not enough food, water, or shelter over their head. Moving on to the environment, our last one, environmental context. Um, they have the seasons, the same as we do, spring, summer, autumn, winter, but they have two added seasons on ours. So they have six seasons. Those other two seasons are monsoon seasons. They mainly affect the south on the coast, and it's a season where it is very, very rainy um, due to the humid air from the sea blowing onto the land and produces these two seasons of monsoon where it absolutely buckets it down with rain. India, as we know, its industries are growing rapidly. There are more and more and more industries growing in India. But as that happens at a fast rate, it's very unsustainable. So what we mean is these factories are growing, but they haven't got the infrastructure to take away the sewage, take away the pollution. So this is getting polluted into the atmosphere. This is getting polluted into the rivers. And that means it's having a big environmental impact in a negative way on India because these industries are growing unsustainably. Um, water and air pollution, so from drinking dirty contaminated water and the air pollution of smog. And smog is, looks like fog, it's this here. Um, where the pollution from cars and factories pollutes the city and gives it this hazy glaze inside the city. So because of this smog and water pollution, it kills 1.1 million people per year in India. Um, you may have seen on the news with the coronavirus that as people have been going indoors in India, this smog has actually started to clear up. And in some places where the Himalayas couldn't be seen because of this smog, you can actually begin to see the Himalayas. Um, last but not least, the River Ganges, because of that air, uh, water pollution, the River Ganges is one of the most polluted rivers in the world. And again, you can see this picture here with this polluted river, which is the River Ganges. This is used in religious ceremonies where people get into this water, being baptized, etc. Uh, and, and some people do drink from this. Farmers use this water. But you can see how contaminated it is because it is growing, as this word says here, this is the important word, it's growing unsustainably. So that's today's lesson done with on the India's context and its background. So here's the task. If you haven't already, use this lesson and complete your booklet on India or your notes. And we'll be adding more onto this next lesson as well. Number two, please complete the quiz on Show My Homework. We know then who's engaging with it and how well you're understanding that. And three, there is an exam question here if you want to push yourself worth four marks, taking you four minutes. Explain India's context from a social and political view. So using today's lesson from a social view and a political view, explain the context of India. Um, that's it for today. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you for everyone who subscribed to our channel. Give us some amazing feedback, uploaded their work. Um, stay safe um, and enjoy the weather that we're getting. So thank you very much. Uh, that's Mr. Lloyd, over and out.